Welcome back Guardians. I have received a huge amount of requests for a lore video about the infamous Thorn. Before I begin, please be aware this is a multiple part series. The first part, which is this video, will strictly focus on Thorn. The second part will focus on the last word and in addition cover the speculation around how the fate of these two exotics are bound together. This is Mylan Games and I hope you enjoy this latest addition to the Destiny Lore playlist. Thorn is truly the most lore intensive item in all of Destiny and potentially a representation of the overall plotline. A story to parallel our own journey. Maybe the greatest evidence of this is hidden in plain sight. There is only one Grimoire card in the whole of the game that uses the actual word destiny. No points given for guessing what this card is. Yep, it is the Ghost Fragment Thorn Grimoire card. I want you to keep this in mind throughout this video. Thorn is a weapon of sorrow. We are told this during the very first step in Thorn's exotic bounty. Quote, The weapons of sorrow were born from forbidden use of the hive's dark power. We thought them eradicated, but recent developments suggest that one of these weapons may still exist in the hive's summoning pits. In order to better understand weapons of sorrow, we turn our attention to the exotic auto rifle, Necrochasm. Necrochasm's Grimoire card clearly states it is also a weapon of sorrow and provides greater description to how these weapons work. Quote, it is said the Necrochasm was born in the twilight after Crota's sword first cracked the moon. That a lost guardian's weapon was altered by the hive in an attempt to fuse their own dark understanding with humanity's mastery of war. The result was a weapon that would feed on its owner's aggression, reaching further when angry eyes drew focus, its hunger rising as it tore through bone and flesh. Any guardian who comes across this weapon must ask some very simple questions with endlessly complicated answers. Is your light bright enough to stand? Even briefly, in full gaze of the hive's abyss, can it handle what has died and been reborn? In those shadows. It appears that weapons of sorrow are alive. They hunger for bone and flesh and feed off the aggression of their owner. The Necrochasm Grimoire card also provides a timeline to the first appearance of these weapons, that is after Crota took the moon. It also emphasizes that it was a combination of hive sorcery fused with human technology. The last sentence is very important to understanding Thorn's story. Is your light bright enough to stand? Even briefly, in full gaze of the hive's abyss, can it handle what has died and been reborn in the shadows? Whilst the Necrochasm card appears to be talking about the birth of the weapon, it is not uncommon for the hive themselves to be reborn. In fact, ogres are given the title of reborn, after they complete an agonizing hive ritual that is taken from the Telthor Unborn Grimoire card. This idea of being reborn is not only applicable to hive, but some may argue that guardians have also been subjected to the nightmares of the hive and reborn in the shadows. Eris Morn is a fantastic example of this. Her card reads, Robbed of her ghost. Eris remained lost among the darkest shadows of the Hellmouth for countless cycles. Despite all odds, she endured. Using the very dark, she battled to emerge a changed warrior. Driven, some would say obsessed, the speaker and Commander Zavala find her compulsions a sickness, convinced she has been fully seduced by the shadows. Despite losing her ghost and being subject to the shadows of the hive, Eris Morn remains loyal to the tower. However, another guardian was not so lucky. We only know him as a noble man, a man that was once a beacon of hope, a hero. However, he eventually succumbed to the shadows and was reborn as Dredgen Yor, ruling with his notorious thorn by his side. His name is now only remembered with shame and disgust. The Ghost Fragment Thorn card 
provides a clue to the catalyst for his transformation. It says, His thoughts were dark. A sadness crept from the depths of his being. He had been a hero for so long, but pride had led him down sorrow's road. It seems to suggest that this man has suffered a terrible loss and has a deep sadness. However, he also has an internal darkness present with a specific reference to pride. Now this is actually a theme represented in other lore stories, that our pride may be one of our biggest weaknesses. It is a trait that provides opportunity for the darkness to make a bargain, a trade, lead us astray for the promise of unbelievable power. The card continues to describe an entity that tries to manipulate the pride, the ego. Quote, Slowly the shadow's whisper became a voice, a dark call, offering glories enough to make even the brightest light wander. And so the noble man hid himself beneath a darkness no flesh should touch, and gave up his mortal self to claim a new birthright. Whether this was choice or destiny is a truth known only to fate. As dust was devoured by night, the noble man ceased to exist. In his place another stood. Same meat, same bone, but so very different. The first and only of his family, the sole forebearer and last descendant of the name Yor. The whisper from the shadows that corrupted the man could be interpreted in two different ways. The first is a metaphoric interpretation, and the call from the shadows is internal. It is a guardian's fear, self-doubt, pride, ego, the darkness that is within all of us. The second interpretation that this whisper from the shadows is coming from the hive. The hive grimoire card says, there are nightmares rising from the shadows and they hunger for our dying hope. And the Thrall Grimoire card says, the shadows have claws. The hive are almost synonymous with the shadows and so it could be interpreted that the call is literally originating from the hive. They whisper promises in the ears of guardians to corrupt them, to turn them towards the darkness I believe both interpretations are correct. We have an internal weakness, a dark side that already exists, and the Hive use that to their advantage. They try to corrupt us by enhancing the darkness that dwells within. So now let's look at why the noble man was so susceptible to corruption. Why did he have this sadness? Why did he have this pride that made him yearn for more power and glory? I believe the answer relates to the great disaster, the moment in history when thousands of guardians attempted to reclaim the moon and failed, defeated by the hive champion Crota. Ghost Fragment Thorn 2 provides evidence of this. The transcript is confusing at first glance, however, quite simple to follow once you understand the format. It states that there are four unidentified parties during this conversation. Each person involved is indicated by the letter U. So you will see in the transcript it will say U.1, which indicates person 1, U.2, which indicates person 2, and so on. There are also associations which connects Dredgen Yor with Jaron Ward, Shin Malfur, Thorn, and the last word. It does not tell you exactly how they are connected, but it hints that these stories are entwined which is the speculation that I will cover in part 2. In this transcript, I believe unidentified person 2 is confirmed as Dredgen Yor, due to the description of the hand cannon being held. Quote, The bone, you see it? Jagged, like thorns. Indicating that the cannon is thorn, and therefore the wielder is likely Dredgen Yor. The other three unnamed characters are bandits. Dredgen Yor says, you're a goddamn cliché, the picture-perfect bandit. If you're happy to agree with these assumptions, then there are some other really important pieces of information in this card. Dredgen says to Bandit 1, Been to Luna? The bandit responds, Excuse me? Dredgen replies, The moon, you been? 
The bandit rebuts, nobody's been. The fact that the bandit does not know that Guardians went back to the moon, or even on the moon during the Golden Age, shows a level of isolation. These bandits have not been to the tower, they have not been inside the city walls, they live in the frontier, pockets of humanity that never made it to the safety of the traveller. You can assume that this bandit was born outside of the city walls, post-collapse, and so never witnessed the hive claim the moon, and never witnessed the city's attempt to retake the moon. However, although not specifically said, dredge in your hints that he has been to the moon. In this conversation. So here is the speculation. The noble man was there for the great disaster on the moon. He witnessed thousands of guardians fall to Crota's blade. That is where his internal darkness began to stir. Sadness developed from seeing his fellow comrades fall in battle. Pride was exaggerated by the thought of revenge. The noble man became hellbent on increasing his power to destroy the hive. What the noble man did not realise was that these emotions that drove him would be his greatest weakness. They would open the doors for the whispers of the hive. We don't know how the hive communicate with guardians to corrupt them. However, I speculate that it likely originates from hive wizards. Hive wizards have this ability to communicate telepathically. This is demonstrated in the Ghost Fragment Warlock 2 card, which describes the capture of a wizard by Ariana 3. She interrogates and tortures the wizard in order to learn how to defeat Crota. In defiance and refusing to provide information, the wizard communicates telepathically with Ariana 3 and shows her a vision, a vision of Crota impaling guardians upon his sword. On a side note, Crota's sword shares similar characteristics with the weapons of sorrow. Like the weapons, the sword is described as being hungry for the light of guardians. The Ghost Fragment Hive 2 Grimoire card also provides greater insight into the power of wizards. It describes the torture of a guardian. Quote, My own light flickers. They took me down into the dark, past tears of massed hive more than we believed could exist, past writhing worms that they swallow whole. I saw the armaments of war. I am weak, so weak. They have clamped me to this spire whilst a black foulness eats my light. The wizard comes now, and then to probe with her scaly claws into my systems, to inquire about my making, the city, what I have seen. I erase and dump as quickly as I can. They will learn little from me. But I am studying them. I know. Pain. Always pain. The wizard is near. I feel her presence as a rip and a knot in the world. She tells me things that I immediately forget. I am too small to hold the vastness of them. Or the terror. I am fading. I have no more that it can take. With my last light, I say to the city, War comes again from the moon. This time they want Earth. Prepare. Once again, we see this ability of wizards to manipulate the mind of guardians. We are also introduced into the idea of these parasites, these worms. That is a story for another time and another lore video. Whilst this card is not about the nobleman, the question is, did something similar happen to him? So I speculate that the noble man had some form of contact with a wizard on the moon, during or immediately after the great disaster. The level of contact is obviously complete speculation. Did he fight a wizard during the battle and the wizard played mind tricks on him? Did he stumble upon a hive ritual site? Or was he simply stranded on the moon post battle? We know that it is possible that some guardians were stranded with evidence from the ghost fragment, the Ocean of Storms card. This says that after the loss, the Vanguard removed all assistance from any operations on the moon. Regardless, I do believe that the noble man had some form of contact with the wizard, and the wizard used those emotions that were born from the atrocities of the great disaster to her advantage. There may be more evidence of this contact, 
Within the steps required in Thorn's exotic bounty and the flavor text of Thorn, Thorn's exotic bounty basically has us enter the summoning pits, a place where Hive are reborn through torture and torment, and in that pit, we encounter a wizard, Zor. I'm sure that this wizard has something to do with the nobleman's story because of the similarities with the name, Dredgen Yor, and the simple fact that this is part of the exotic bounty. Thorn's flavor text says, to rend one's enemies is to see them not as equals, but objects, hollow of spirit and meaning. 13th Understanding, 7th Book of Sorrow. The word rend means to rip apart violently, or to cause emotional pain. This appears to be a characteristic of hive rituals. They are torn apart and reborn, but they are hollow. You have probably noticed when you kill hive, they fall to ash. There is nothing to them. When you kill Vex, they spill the milky white fluid, the radiolaria. When you kill Fallen, they expel ether. When you kill Cabal, fluid and gas comes from their suit. When you kill Hive, they dissipate into ash. Here is some more speculation. Like all good sorceresses, the wizards keep their ritual secrets in the Book of Sorrow. They perform these rituals to rebirth the Hive, hollow of meaning and ready to be filled by darkness. Is it possible that the nobleman ventured into the Hive summoning pits and witnessed Yor conducting one of these hollowing rituals, and without knowing the nobleman was affected by the ritual, set upon the path of sorrow, a cycle that would hollow him and consume his light? Another speculative theory could be that the nobleman stole a page from the Book of Sorrow, the 13th Understanding, hoping it would contain the secrets to the Hive, the secrets to their destruction, so that he could revenge those who had fallen during the Great Disaster. There may actually be evidence of this in his conversation with one of the bandits. In Ghost Fragment Thorn 2 card, Dredgen Yor says to the bandit, do you have nightmares? Ever seen a nightmare? Ever open your eyes and realize the horror wasn't a dream? The terror wasn't gone? I've seen nightmares. They live in the shadows. They've been watching. I thought, it's foolish, I know. But I thought I saw a way. Then maybe we could win. Maybe we could survive. But once you step into those shadows, it's so very hard to walk in the light. It seems very plausible that the nobleman was trying to find a solution, a way to win against the hive. However, he could not resist and was corrupted upon entering the shadows. Something had been set in motion. It fed into his dark side. And there was no stopping the corruption spreading once it had been started. This would not be the first time that a guardian has attempted to discover hive sorcery and use their own powers against them. The noble man almost parallels Tolan the Shattered. Whilst Tolan was considered mad after discovering the secrets of the hive, I do not believe he was corrupted like the noble man was. In fact, many cards refer to how acutely aware Tolan was of the ease of being corrupted by the Hive. The Blades of Crota Grimoire card reinforces this. Tolan says to Vel in Ariana 3, Death is nothing compared with the shadows. He then says, in reference to wielding one of the dark swords, a weapon of the night, when you have your hand around the hilt and their ash under your boot, you might change your tune, Hunter. This is a reference to the corruption that occurs with wielding hive weaponry. Toland is well aware that the weapons of the hive hold great power, however they can easily corrupt a guardian. The weapons are almost parasitic. They feed off their owner. They feed off the internal darkness, the aggression, and also the light until the wielder is hollow, just like the hive. 
So now we move on to Thorn itself. Understanding how Thorn fits into this story is actually quite difficult and more complicated than I expected. It is like asking who came first. Did the noble man transform into Dredgen Yore, influenced by a wizard, and then create Thorn? Or was Thorn already there, being a weapon of sorrow, linked to hive sorcery, linked to the wizard? It was a catalyst for the transformation, whispering in his ear. I believe it is a bit of both, and there is evidence for both. In the ghost fragment Thorn 2, Dredgen Yore says to one of the bandits, didn't find it, made it, in reference to Thorn. This is obvious evidence that he actually made Thorn. However, the ghost fragment Thorn card says, on his last day he sat and watched the sun fall, his, th his final thoughts pure of mind if not body, held to a fleeting hope. In his first moments as a new being, he looked down at his rose and realized for the first time it held no petals, only the jagged purpose of angry thorns. The key is within the last sentence, the specific use of realized for the first time. This implies that his weapon was always thorn. It did not transform from rose to thorn, it was just not until he became a new being that he actually realized the true form of his weapon. This theory is also reinforced by the Ghost Fragment Thorn 2 card. Dredgen says, I used to think of it as a rose, but the bloom is just a byproduct of its anger. Once again, it seems to suggest that his original weapon, Rose, did not transform, but more that his perspective is what has changed. I believe this idea that Rose did not transform into Thorn, but was always Thorn, is just the lie that Dredgenior tells himself. It is sort of like saying, this is who I am, I have always been this way. This is supported by the Ghost Fragment Thorn 3 card. The card describes a conversation between Dredgen Yore and his ghost. Dredgen Yore says, Yet you disagree so thoroughly with my change in perspective. His ghost replies, If only the change was simply one of perspective, your evolution was no choice. This is not you having come to an understanding after careful considered thought. This is corruption. Dredgen replies, The shadows? His ghost says, the darkness. I believe this is the true version of events, that it was not just a change in perspective, but he was corrupted from being exposed to the hive, specifically a hive wizard. This exposure capitalized on the darkness within him and allowed his mind to be infiltrated. When Dredgen Yore says he made Thorn, it may have been intentional and he used the secrets of the hive, or it may have been unintentional, and as the nobleman began to transform, so did his weapon. Darkness seeped into the weapon. Regardless, the weapon itself took on its own life form and started a cycle of corruption. It began to feed off Dredgen Yore's pride, pain, fear, aggression, and as Dredgen's light faded, Thorn increased in power. As Thorn increased in power, Dredgen's own power increased as he wielded the weapon. You can see that Dredgen and Thorn fueled each other. At some point following the nobleman's transformation, Dredgen Yore appeared in the tower and entered the crucible. The mark of contention, a titan mark, states that the mighty Thalor was invincible in the crucible until Dredgen Yore and his Thorn. The cloak of Dredgen Yore says, Before he took Panhannon's light, Dredgen Yore ruled the crucible, the notorious thorn at his side. I guess the most obvious question is, why did they let Dredgen Yore into the crucible with Thorn? It does not specifically say he killed these guardians, however it heavily implies that Dredgen Yore removed their light until the point of death. I have not found any factual reason for why Dredgen was allowed into the tower, let alone the crucible. However, I can only speculate it was the same emotion that started it all.
pride. Lord Shax, the Crucible Master, is one of the most pride-driven characters in Destiny. It may be possible that he thought they could learn something from Dredgen Yor and the Crucible. Maybe others could learn the power of the Hive. Maybe they had faith that Dredgen Yor was not yet lost. The Titan Mark in YOB quotes Thalor. One day in the Crucible tells you everything you need to know about a Guardian, even yourself. Maybe this was the last effort to save Dredgen Yor, to rediscover that noble man. Regardless of Lord Shax's reasons to allow Dredgen into the Crucible, I can only assume that Dredgen was exiled. It would be reasonable that Dredgen would be exiled for simply dabbling in Hive sorcery, like Tolan was, let alone the innocent blood that was on his hands. The Ghost Fragment Thorn cards that I have been quoting appear to take place outside the city walls, in the frontier, and this is where we witness the monster that is Dredgen Yor. Like the Hive, he considers his victims hollow, empty of meaning and spirit. This is most evident in the Ghost Fragment Thorn 2 card. The conversation is between Dredgen and four bandits, partaking in dangerous banter, as if testing each other's own strength and will. Eventually, Dredgen tires of the conversation, and three audible cracks cut through the air. Dredgen shoots dead three of the bandits, three bandits that were not even talking. He says to the last bandit, Sit down. Sit down. Your mouth just got your friends dead. This is what happens when you bore me. And right now, I am so very bored. Dredgen torments the last bandit and says, You wanted to see my prize. He points Thorn at the face of the man. Look at it. The man begins to sob and closes his eyes. Dredgen instructs him, Open your eyes. Look at it. As the man opens his eyes one last time, and between the sobs, Dredgen executes the bandit. This card is truly horrific and graphic, but clearly represents Dredgen's transformation and disregard for life. We are starting to get to the end of Dredgen Your story. Ghost Fragment Thorn 3 card documents his last conversation with his ghost. His ghost makes a final bid for Dredgen to change his ways, to come back to the light. His ghost reminds him that he has murdered innocent people. Dredgen claims that innocence is a matter of perspective and threatens to carve the light from his own ghost, leaving the empty carcass of his first and last friend in the dirt. His ghost finally realises that the noble man is lost once and for all, with a frightening statement from Dredgen. Dredgen says, the only reason why he would give someone hope is so when he preyed upon them, they would have more to lose. Their pain would be greater, their screams more pure. The ghost finally realises that the noble man is truly dead, and only Dredgen Yor stands in his place. The last piece to this story comes from the flavour text for the last word. It reads, Yours, not mine. Renegade hunter Shin Malfur to Dredgen Yor. This is the perfect spot to end this episode for Thorn, and part 2 will cover the last word, so we can see how Hunter Shin Malfur came to be the owner of the last word, and why he faced Dredgen Yor. Before you leave, you know that I like to reward those viewers who stay to the end. Now I have saved one other piece of evidence for this moment because it contains spoilers. This information is taken from some of the dialogue said in the very first mission of the Taken King. If you do not want to know anything about the first mission in the Taken King, then please leave now. You likely already know that in your first mission in the Taken King, you will travel to Phobos, one of Mars's moons. You likely have heard Commander Zavala providing instructions during this mission. However, I recently watched a longer playthrough that had been leaked, and there was another character that provided instructions, and this was Eris Morn. As you enter the Cabal Firebase, Eris Morn says this, 
Something has drawn us here. I hear whispers in the dark, fingertips on the surface of my mind. The whispers are louder. I will endure. This provides evidence that these whispers of corruption, whispers of the shadow that corrupted Dredgen Yor, is not only coming from the Hive, but has originated directly from the Hive God himself, Oryx. When you enter the Taken King, ask yourself this question. Is your light bright enough, Guardian? <laughs>